arrived last night, it got two below zero Fahrenheit. So I shut off all the pumps and the activity in there because I thought there's a good chance that you know some of these pipes are running against the walls. So I thought there was a chance that some of those might freeze. And I've got it uh, engineered so that if you shut the pump off, you know everything will drain, so there won't be any water sitting in the pipes to freeze and bust them. But anyway. It got, I, I looked at the thermometer this morning, and it said inside here, it got 34 degrees. So that's, that's, a, that's not too bad when you consider you know, how cold it got outside. Now, uh, I just turned the pumps back on, and the water has started to flow. In the shop. There's a little bit of water coming in here. And again, like it's coming out of that pump right there, and what happens is, you can see that little pipe coming up right there goes out there and then it feeds around here and then it comes up you can see on top of there and then it feeds these uh, these little grow beds up here now some of those are filling up a little bit that's why you don't get too much flow but anyway it's flowing and it's running now let's go back over here and see if this other line that goes over here has defrosted yes that is flowing as well okay it's doing good by the way, this is broccoli. Uh, but anyway, it's running now. <clears throat> and uh, let's look at the temperatures here. It's 60 degrees in here. And like I said, the I don't know if you can read this, but it says it got down to 34 degrees last night in here, inside. So, uh, and right now, it is at the high for the last couple of days. It's been a little cold here the last couple of days. We've got a big snowstorm. Anyway. There we go, and it didn't freeze in here last night, at least not close to the, well, away from the walls. And everything's still growing well, spinach, all that stuff. But just thought I'd let you know that, see, the water in these pipes, I, I guess if it gets cold enough, you know, you really ought to shut these things off because they can freeze. And if they freeze, you know, then your pump gets damaged and so forth, so... But it's running now, and uh, the water temperature seems to be 47.8 degrees in the pond. And I fed the fish earlier, and I didn't see them come up. So yesterday that water temperature was about oh, 57, so it's dropped 10 degrees. And I think when temperatures fluctuate like that, and it's pretty rough on the fish. Uh, goldfish can tolerate fairly cold temperatures, but I have learned that they don't tolerate rapid changes in temperature very well. But anyway, we'll see how they go. It is the 6th of January today, 2017, and last night it got nearly 20 below zero. And that is Fahrenheit. It's cold. But look at right here. It's about 19 degrees in here. And uh, my uh, recording thermometer shows that it got down to maybe like 7 or 8 degrees in here. Now, we definitely have ice on top of the pond now. Let's see. But the thermometer still says it's 40.1 degrees in there. So that's interesting. Uh... Let me see if I can break this. I'm just curious. Let's take my stick here. See how thick this is. Ooh. Well, it's too thick. It's too thick just to break with this little thing. So I'll I'll have to assume it's an inch or, inch or so thick. But the uh, like I say, it says it's 41 degrees, about two feet down in there. So hmm, interesting does freeze over so I'll need to put a bubbler or something in it and over here of course this is one solid block of ice <laughs> look at that this is probably the coldest part of the year it might we might have a week or more of this uh, cold cold weather like this but then it'll start warming up and we can start getting back out here and working
Well, last year about this time, I didn't have any heat in this greenhouse, and I don't have a lot of heat in here right now, but I have enough to keep anything from freezing in here. So I just wanted to kind of show you what the differences were between this year and last year. Now, the reason it's only, uh, you know, just keeping it above freezing in here right now is because I put one heater in here, and I wanted to gather some data to know just how much heat I would need to keep this thing a lot warmer than that. Now I know what it takes now, so I've got to install some solar uh, panels to run a little heating system for a water storage tank system and so forth, because <laughs> the amount of heat I'm gonna need, if I bought propane or something else, you know, or natural gas, and I mean, this thing would cost me a fortune to heat this. But solar, uh, not so much. Once you install it, it'd, it'd be pretty good. But anyway, let me show you what I've got here. And you can see uh, the difference from last year. year if you remember, this uh, was frozen solid on the top. It had about an inch of ice, maybe a little bit less than that. But one curious thing was, if you'll see here, it says it's 46.4 degrees right now. And in the winter time last year, even when that even when that got ice on top of it, about two feet below the surface, it never got below 41 degrees, I think. So that kind of shows you the the heat in the ground. Now, if we go over here, if you remember, I walked over here on one of those, showed you this uh, grow bed, and it was frozen solid. I mean, not just on the surface, frozen solid. So the heat makes a big difference, and all I have for the heater right now is that heater right there, and it doesn't put out very much heat. It's it's hot water being pumped through it, and then it comes on at night, only at night, and uh, so that's what I've got. But that made the difference, and my calculations kind of show me if I have another heat heater like that, uh, and maybe pump up, jack up the water temperature just a little bit, it'd probably keep this greenhouse a lot warmer than it is right now and uh, let me just give you one look at the tomatoes now it is uh, end of February right now but you can see these tomato plants are still alive they've given up uh, giving me tomatoes even though right here there's some new ones but I don't know if the plant is going to survive so I'm going to wait until everything warms up and hopefully these tomatoes vines will start growing again because the roots are still good. But that remains to be seen. Anyway, that's the update. And uh, winter greenhousing, you can do it during the day. No problem, even if it's really, really cold outside. But during the night, uh, yeah, there's, there's a problem and you need heat.